But I mean, once we are, um, we move away from that little bit of historical time where the founding figure was there. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can claim with certainty that they have the absolute interpretation of a particular scripture. So perhaps what we're looking for in human development is a relinquishing of certainty? But no, as indirect, the discussion that we have had so far becomes an indirect way of framework to, uh, to, to see whether we are moving towards the right I mean, we have the right approach to get certainty, or uh, in, uh, to be sure of it. To use the metaphor of growing up, children want to know their world is safe. They want their parents to have the answers. They want to know what right and wrong is in simple terms. As we become adults, we suddenly find ourselves in this place of having to do discernment and wrestle with questions. and in what are sometimes called gray areas, where it's not black and white, and we have to make choices. And so, in a sense, uncertainty and adulthood are inseparable. Yes. With maturity, not with adulthood, with, with, with maturity. maturity. With maturity, is insepar they are in inseparable. And for people who would, would say, well, uh, we need certainty, and we cannot live without sanctity, then obviously the literal interpretation would give them the answer that they are looking for. Mm -hmm. But for others who would say, look, once we move away from that small historical time where the founding f uh, figure was available that you could go to, from then onwards, it's a matter of degree of in uh, uncertainty. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, we are required to do everything possible to reduce the probability of mistake. Yes, between the zero and one continuum, I, the goal is one, but I know I cannot reach it. If the, the, the founding figure was available, I might have gone to the founding figure and said, okay, explain yourself and uh, reach a certainty. Mm -hmm. In between, my responsibility is to reduce the probability of mistake. My suggestion would be that it's kind of a, well, uh, the word that comes to mind is a bell curve, but it's um, basically that we start out with a certain kind of certainty in childhood. We move into maturity and are confronted with struggles with all sorts of uncertainty. The, if, the, if this is a legitimate way to describe it, the mature adults whom I've met, uh, mature in their thinking and in their emotions, have moved through that uncertainty to a place of new and deeper certainty. But the certainty in the first case is based upon uh, the world around oneself, your, your parents, your, um, your living environment, and so forth. The certainty in the end is based on a, as thorough an understanding as a human can have of things like love and wisdom, principles that prevail across cultural boundaries and across religions. Let, I mean, let's go back to the metaphor of the circle. Okay. Uh, once I have accepted that there is a degree and element of uncertainty in everything that I do. Why? Because distance and time and so on has moved, they have moved me away, separated me from that original point of, uh, say, conception in which mm -hmm. you had the founding figure who could tell you exactly what he wanted uh, and there was no doubt at the end of the conversation where uh, you, you stood. Mm -hmm. This, yes, there is a degree of uncertainty, but this metaphor of moving towards the center and collective movement can become the criteria by which I use to reduce the probability of mistake. As I, as a scholar, try to uh, uh, look and search and struggle, in every step I ask myself, is it helping me, my, this understanding of the text, mm -hmm. is it helping me to move once, if I were to interpret my text in this manner, somebody else did the same, are we collectively moving forward or we are stepping out of bound and stretching each other? And the wonderful um, 
perplexing challenge of all this, I suppose, that sometimes the steps moving forward have to do with literal interpretations and some they have, sometimes they have to do with poetic interpretation. Yeah, I mean, room for, once we accept that uh, we need to room, uh, create the room for interpretation, then uh, there are many interpretations. And none of them should be judged as inherently right or No, yes. But uh, final thoughts as we wind up our, our brief little discussion. I mean, I know we've only scratched the surface again, but hopefully we've given people plenty of things to think about. Yeah, I think that every, every, every step that we take, if we ask ourselves, is this helping in bringing harmony uh, to the world that we live in and making even many, uh, uh, many, uh, minuscule difference uh, to, towards the betterment mm -hmm. of everybody else, then we are on the right path or approach. Well, thank you very much for the insights you've shared. Thank you very much for I really appreciate having you on my show. Thank you.